The more we learn about space, the more we are convinced that the Earth is perfect. A reliable magnetic field, a dense atmosphere with a high oxygen content, and plenty of water. All of this is rare in itself, but there are many more random events that have happened on Earth that have made it so comfortable for people. Take the tilt of the planet's axis. For example, the Earth is tilted 23 degrees. If the figure were less than Jupiter's, there would be much less land on our planet suitable for agriculture because the amount of heat received from the sun would be constant. The equator would turn into a hot hell. The poles would be even more frosty deserts, and the warm and cold air masses would be in a static state. That is, no seasons, no temperature fluctuations, no humidity fluctuations, and therefore much fewer crops, and this is only one of the factors. There is also atmospheric pressure, forests, sea currents, and many other key things that exist on the Earth. It's tempting to say that the Earth is the most comfortable planet in space, and it can't get any better. But what if it does? Mathematics, physics, and astronomy are ruthless things, if only because these three sciences claim that there may be planets in space that are more habitable than Earth. Earlier, Hella and John Armstrong in 2014 even introduced the concept of a superhabitable planet, according to their definition, this planet or satellite has characteristics that allow it to support a more diverse flora and fauna than Earth. But how is this possible? Well, to begin with, it is worth looking not so much at the planet as at the star. The Sun is a typical G-class yellow dwarf of the main sequence. We are very grateful to our star for comfortable living conditions, but still, stars of this type are not the best for living. This title is held by K-class stars ideal nannies and caring luminaries. For their planets, they are usually cooler than the sun, but it's not about temperature. It is theoretically possible to live near a tiny brown dwarf. Only the radius of its habitable zone depends on the temperature of the star and the highlights that make a star ideal its activity and lifespan. Our sun is a kind of compromise between huge and small, as well as hot and cold stars. But still, G-class stars are not the golden middle ground because they don't live that long. The sun is already 4 billion years old and it is gradually increasing in brightness. In about a billion more years, it will turn into a red giant and be guaranteed to destroy life on Earth. It is quite possible that Mars will return to a fully inhabited zone with liquid water for some time. But even with ideal scenario, its days will also be numbered quite quickly due to the expansion of the star. In a dry scenario, we have about 5 to 6 billion years that a star like the Sun gives for life. At first glance, this seems like a lot. But don't forget that it took evolution 3.5 billion years for single-celled bacteria to turn into humans. And in a billion years, the Sun will kill this person. This is where K-class stars come into play. They are calmer and live for about 40 or even 70 billion years, which means that hypothetical life around such stars will have much more time to develop without global cataclysms. This is, by the way, is another disadvantage of G-class stars. Our sun is quite unstable because the Earth is plagued by ice ages and global warming. Just a few tens of thousands of years ago, glaciers reached central. Germany just tens of thousands of years ago. It is easy to guess that this does not interfere with the diversity of life. Life that revolves around a K-class star will be better insured against the star's tricks and it will be able to develop for tens of billions of years, reaching incredible heights. It adds, points to the score of such stars, is that there are many more of them in the universe. If stars like our Sun make up 6% of the total number in the Milky Way, then K-class stars. K-class stars make up 13%, which means that they have a higher chance of harboring life. Let's move on and talk about size. They matter in planetary science. If our Earth were 10 times bigger, the pressure created by the liquid mantle would increase many times over, and, most likely, the iron in the core would have frozen. With it, 
the magnetic field would disappear. And instead of the aurorae, we would see the faces of people dying from radiation. This would be compounded by the constant bombardment of asteroids, which the thick planet would attract impacts, and at the same time, volcanic activity, because more mantle means. More attempts to break through to the surface. It is difficult to build accurate models, but in general, scientists agree that life on such a planet is likely, but not very diverse. After all, there is still gravity, which would make us all ten times heavier, and many are the killing factors. The same can be said about a small Earth. Here, you don't have to look far to find problems, less gravity means less forces holding the atmosphere together. And there are still problems with this. In 2009, NASA calculated the rate of atmospheric loss by Venus, Mars, and the Earth. And the surprise was that the Earth was losing it the fastest. To be more precise, about 90 tons of substance are lost every day. Compared to Mars, this is not particularly correct, because it is smaller, and has lost most of it long ago, but the fact itself is clear. If you magically shrink the Earth, the atmosphere will be blown away very quickly, and there will be no need to talk about any life. Still, there is a middle ground between the two extremes. A planet that is one and a half to two times heavier than the Earth still has a couple of advantages. First, it has twice the gravity, which will make the atmosphere denser, automatically reducing the amount of solar radiation and leading to a couple of pleasant side effects like erosion and straightening of the terrain. The depth of the oceans will decrease, and the diversity of marine life will increase, because it is easier for it to live in shallow water. Tectonic activity will increase slightly, but this is offset by the vast expanse of space for settlement. People in the Curials have nowhere to go from their volcanoes. With a slightly larger planet and shallow oceans, there would be enough land for everyone, and land, habitable, because a dense atmosphere would raise the temperature on such a planet by 5 degrees. With plenty of oxygen, life would be like paradise. However, it will have to adapt to gravity, and it is unlikely that the trees will be as tall. Still, according to scientists, the advantages of planets slightly larger than Earth outweigh their disadvantages. What else could make a hypothetical exoplanet better than Earth? There are a much larger number of continents. When 300 million years ago, there was only one Pangaea on Earth. Its center was a barely green desert, because the farther away from the ocean, the drier the climate. The same story was repeated with other supercontinents. And even now, the center of Eurasia with the Gobi Desert and Africa, with the Sahara, cannot be called particularly populated. The Space.com resource consulted with astrobiologists and all of them said that the smaller the continents, the better. They will not have parts far from the ocean. Just look at isolated Australia with its unique spiders and kangaroos. This is how the world works. The strongest survive, and the further life is placed from each other, the more chances weaker species have to survive and evolve into something interesting. In general, as you can see, man is such an ungrateful creature that instead of thanking us, he has devoted hundreds of scientific articles to the imperfections of the Earth. He has also invested billions in finding a better planet. And the truth is that he has had mixed success so far. In 2020, Dirk Schultz released a high-profile article with a loud headline. About 24 planets that may turn out to be super habitable. That is, to have conditions better than Earth's. But unfortunately, upon closer inspection, it turned out that 23 of them did not meet the expected characteristics. Since then, we have not made much progress in the search for a habitable planets. Most often, scientists use mathematics to calculate the orbits of the planet's mass and hypothetical atmospheres. But as we have already said, life is a very fragile thing and too much can go wrong to prove. For the existence of a super-Earth needs to be ironclad, and currently one of the main candidates is Kepler-44-to-B. This planet fills almost the entire checklist of scientists we have mentioned. Firstly, it is located in the habitable zone of a Class K star. This star is about 40% lighter than the Sun, 
but Kepler 44 to b is closer to it. The year on the planet is only 112 days. The truth is, the star Kepler 44 to b receives about about 30% less than you and I do, but this is corrected by the second remarkable detail. The size of Kepler 44 to b is 30% larger in radius and about twice as heavy as the Earth, which means that all the points about a dense atmosphere, shallow oceans, and a large space for life are fulfilled. The greenhouse effect from a dense atmosphere is theorized to eliminate the difference in the difference in the heat received, making Kepler 44 to be one of the most promising candidates for life. However, the planet is located 1206 light years from Earth. In theory, the power of James Webb should be enough to see it closer. But even if the telescope finds something remarkable with the current development of communication and the speed of spacecraft, we will not be able to check it soon. The only good news is that a K-type star will have a much longer life than the Earth, and our descendants have a lot of time to spare. Another candidate for life is the TRAPPIST-1 star system, which has four planets in its habitable zone, one of which has attracted the attention of scientists. TRAPPIST-1e is a unique world with physical characteristics that are as similar to Earth as possible. The exoplanet's mass, radius, gravity, density, and even temperature are very similar to Earth's. The problem is that the star of this system is incredibly cold. Its mass is 10 times less than the solar mass, which means that the habitable zone is much closer to the star. A year on TRAPPIST-1e lasts only six days, and the proximity to the luminary puts the planet at risk of constant bombardment by radiation. However, if, by some miracle, life has learned to survive them, it could exist for billions of years, because brown dwarfs are insanely resilient, and their lifespan is even longer than that of K-class stars. We shouldn't cross TRAPPIST-1 off the list of potentially habitable planets, especially since the world is only 40 light years away from Earth, and the James Webb Telescope will certainly conduct observations in this system. The unfortunate truth is that our knowledge of life is incredibly limited, capable of wiping out cities, but we can't create even the simpler single-celled life. This mystery has not yet been solved, which means that any analysis of the planets is a priori meaningless, based only on our observations of the Earth. And space is infinite, and life may exist in it in forms that we don't even know about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more interesting information about space and astronomy, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to like this video so we know you appreciate our content. And leave us a comment with your thoughts and questions. Thank you for watching, join us, and see you soon in the depths of space.